That's a round of applause. Ooh. See, it's a round of applause. You're so punny, Dustin. I know. <laughs> Hello everybody, it is Wednesday as usual and we are back to show you what is new from Dark Horse this week. I am Kara, I am the social media coordinator here. And I am Dustin, I am the PR coordinator for Dark Horse Comics. And uh, we would like to give you an opportunity to win all of these lovely things that we are about to talk to you about yes, today. Indeed. All you gotta do is share this video on Facebook. Uh, in order to enter to win, just make sure that your share is set to public so that we can see you in all of your glory. And we will get back to you early tomorrow morning to let you know if you are the lucky winner of all this swag. Yes, make sure to check back and see if we have commented on your share if you are the winner. Um, if you have any questions about the comics that you see here today, please feel free to ask away. Uh, leave a comment below and if we can't address it today, we will get back to you next week with an answer if we can. And, as per usual, there are some dope digital sales going on. I will let Kara take it away with the first one. That's right. So, first and foremost, we have a fun staff pick sale. Um, a lot of our staff members, myself included, picked some of our favorite comics for you to read. And those are all on sale. You can get, uh, actually, you'll save more than 50% off, I believe, on the graphic novels. There's a whole lot of Dorkin on there, because yes. we love Evan Dorkin. Pretty much all of them. Yes. Uh, my staff pick is definitely a Dorkin pick, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. You have to go look and find out. Yes, there's all kinds of goodness there. We'll keep it nice and mysterious. Yeah. Uh, check that out. We'll be dropping links below for you. Uh, so make sure to check that out. In addition to the staff pick sale, we have also got a really awesome Buffy Mega Bundle and Buffy sale going on. So essentially what that means is if you purchase the Mega Bundle, it's gonna give you a flat rate of $199.99 and that is gonna give you access to the entire digital Buffy library. So that is a massive mm -hmm. amount of comics. You would need an actual library to fill it with the oh. physical books. So this conveniently allows you to have all of that fantastic <laughs> content on your iPhone or your tablet uh, or whatever or other kind of digital device you prefer to use. Right. If you don't need all of that goodness, uh, all of our Buffy titles are also included uh, in an a la carte sale that's gonna give you half off of everything. So that's gonna be 99 cents for digital single issues. It does not get better than that. That's a lot of Buffy. That's a lot of comics, period. In general, so, yes. So we'll drop links for that below when we are done here. And and as always, just digital.darkhorse.com. That's like 10 years worth of material, too. It's a lot of it's, comics. It's a lot of comics. <laughs> it's a lot. That, that would take you a while to read. Yeah, so good luck with that. Yeah, have fun. Challenge accepted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in physical comics today, we have a new number one. And I'm just going to launch right into this debut. This is the new Tomb Raider series. It is called Inferno. So Tomb Raider Inferno number one. Finds us in uh, another new adventure with Lara Croft. Trinity is on high alert. They know Lara is coming. And now, under the shrewd command of a new officer, they're ready for any surprises. But Lara is steadfast in her quest to uncover their secrets. Though typically equally prepared, this time Lara may just find herself one step behind. So if you're a new Tomb Raider fan, you can still pick this up and enjoy it. Um, or if you're a longtime fan, I think you will really like this. The writers return, Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly. They're doing a fantastic job telling an amazing, exciting story. Um, and we are seeing the return of Philip Sevy on the art, which I'll show you another little page in here. Um, letters by Michael Heisler, colors by Mike Atia, and covers for this series are done by Hannah Templer. So this is, again, the return of Philip Sevy on art, and I know he's kind of a fan favorite, so uh, fans of the series will enjoy that too. Yeah, this is the biggest group of Tomb Raider and Lara Croft super fans, so they've done a really yeah, good job yeah. on this story. We're excited for you to read it. Uh, we have also got BPRD, The Devil You Know, number seven, in which Hellboy reunites with Abe Sapien as demons gather in New York to enslave all that remains of mankind. Um, this is intense. If you tuned into last week's episode, we had a nice long chat with... Uh, Mignolaverse editor Katie O'Brien. Um, so as you know, this is the final arc in BPRD. Um, so things are getting really intense and we're excited that Hellboy is back in this arc. Um, so after 17 years away, this is Hellboy back joining forces with the BPRD. Um, look at this amazing cover. Uh, by We've got covers by Mike Mignola and Max Fumara uh, for this one. The artist is Sebastian Fumara, of course, with colorist Dave Stewart. Pretty excited for that one. It's it's getting intense. Um, also new this week, we have a new American Gods. This is My Ansel number four. 
Um, and as always, we have a variant cover by David Mack, which is beautiful. And we have the main cover in Technicolor Glory by Glenn Fabry and Adam Brown. Um, there's some pretty sweet Easter Bunny goodness on here. We oh, actually, the bunnies. We, we shared a preview of these uh, around Easter time because they were Literal so, Easter eggs. so amazing. Yes. Literal Easter eggs, Literal. Yes. Um, so I'm going to pick just one of these for now. Um, but in this particular issue, Wednesday is taking Shadow to San Francisco to sway the goddess Easter, hence the covers, to join their forces in the upcoming devastating God War. So this is another new installment in the ongoing American Gods. This is the second arc of three, and issue number four in that arc. You know how in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Anya is terrified of bunnies? Like, <laughs> that cover gives oh, yeah. her, like, that's always played to comedic effect, but, uh... This, I'm um, kind of behind her Yeah, on this, this one that. is nice and pretty and lovely. This one is the stuff of nightmares. Evil if, rabbits. If you are afraid it's of rabbits. Twilight Zone the movie. <laughs> yeah. And I, oh, and here's a little peek at the back. I like the back cover art. Too. Yeah, the back cover yeah. art is so good. Ah, it's fun, fun little, little minotaur. minotaur. Yeah. We have also got World of Tanks, Citadel number two. Uh, this is written by Garth Ennis with art by PJ Holden. Uh, colors are by Mike Atia with a cover by Isaac Hannaford. Um, this is awesome. Uh, so as the two vast tank armies clash on the plains of Kursk, uh, Russians and Germans alike are caught in a maelstrom of steel and fire. Uh, Piotr and Ginger find themselves outmatched by almost everything on the battlefield and dangerously undermined by divisions within their own ranks. Um, so this is blazing battle action uh, in Ennis and Holden's uh, continuation. Um, and this is a, a really great war story. Um, Garth Ennis is a bit of a World War II uh, fanatic, and so he knows all of the history of it. Uh, there's a lot of historical accuracy with the tanks and the battle. Um, so this uh, involves a tale of war on the hellish eastern front. So check that out if you are a fan of Garth and or tanks and blowing stuff up. Right. And it comes with a, each issue has a World of Tanks code on it as well. It does, that you can yes. Use in the game, so. Yes, that's well, worth mentioning well, as well. Bonus. Thanks for the save. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's popular, so I remember, because I know, because we get asked about it. Also coming up, we have Resident Alien and Alien New in New York, number three. This is really exciting because this series has been picked up by Sci-Fi. They've ordered a pilot. So we'll see um, if it makes it to become an actual show, but it's still very exciting news. It is progress and that it might become a show. Um, so this is an ongoing series by Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse. Um, in this particular arc, the... Um, Harry, our main character, is on his way to New York City, and he and his shaman friend soon find themselves with an alien contact. A surprising connection to New York's art world and graffiti culture is found, and Harry's very private new acquaintance could take him a step closer to communicating with his home planet. And so this just continues the ongoing series. It's a fantastic sci-fi murder mystery um, with our main character being an alien stranded on Earth who uh, is basically hiding in plain sight, but he's getting a little concerned in this particular series because some are beginning to see through his disguise. So again, this has been picked up by Sci-Fi and it may come to TV eventually too, which would be very exciting. Awesome. We've got a new uh, volume for the kiddos too. This is Plants vs. Zombies Volume 10, Rumble at Lake Gumbo. Uh, the battle for clean water begins as soon as Dr. Zombos discovers Loop Gumbo near Neighborville. Uh, Gargantuars start posing on Muscle Beach. Volleyballs bounce off bungee zombies, and Zombos uses a huge underwater drill to muddy and pollute the lake. Uh, neighborhood defenders Nate, Patrice, and Crazy Dave spot trouble and grab all the tangled kelp and party crabs they can to quell another zombie attack. Uh, this is party by... <laughs> <laughs> this is by some of my favorite... People. Uh, this is written by Paul Tobin, um, artist uh, by Ron Chan, uh, colorist is Matt J. Rainwater. Uh, Ron Chan also did the cover. He's just got a really fantastic style for these plants and zombies. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. This whole week leading up to the book's release, you might have seen the Plants vs. Zombies social accounts sharing little tidbits from inside so you could see some of the new creatures and I just, just, I would pay attention to them. They always release a few little tidbits like that before each new book comes out. Yeah, if you're a PVZ fan at all, you should be following their, their social channels because yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah, they ask fun questions and show you, um, again, little sneak peeks of characters and, and new things that are coming to the game as well. So, um, in very different book news, 
We also have the next uh, omnibus volume of Hellboy. So if you haven't been uh, following along, we are releasing the entire Hellboy story in chronological order for the first time as opposed to publication order. Um, and so these omnibus volumes contain tons of material presented in that chronological order. Um, so this is a great place if you're new to Hellboy to jump on, or if you're a big fan, this is also just a, another recommended reading order for you. Um, so in this particular volume, uh, we have 15 short stories written by Mignola um, to give a pretty good introduction to the character and to the world of Hellboy. Uh, the early days of his monster hunting career, 1947 to 1961, include the entirety of his Mexico adventures, which is a really fun series, one of my favorites, featuring art by Fabio Moon, Gabriel Ba, and Mick McMahon. Um, over 70 pages drawn by Mignola himself. More than half of the book is drawn by Richard Corbin, which is very exciting also including the award-winning Southern Gothic tale, The Crooked Man. So again, uh, whether you're new to Hellboy or a longtime fan, this is gonna be a really, ex just, I can't recommend this particular omnibus series enough. It's a great way to pick up and learn about Hellboy or just to have all the stories in order at once. And we will have these in print. Um, if you guys tuned in last time, we talked to Katie about this at length. She is the Mignolaverse editor. Um, but these are all going to be in paperback and they will stay in print alongside our hardcover library editions. So if you prefer the hardcovers, those will stay available too. A lot of Hellboy. We are also launching a new manga series here with Gantz G Volume 1. Uh, this is going to be awesome. Uh, <laughs> victims of a lethal bus crash wake in a schoolroom where an ominous black sphere announces your lives have ended. How you use your new lives is entirely up to me. It doesn't really sound like that, it but if that's you the want. voice in your head, <laughs> yeah. then so be it. Uh, so a new Gantz team is then sent to fight bizarre aliens, and that is all you need to know. Uh, I can't show you the inside because this is controversial and violent. So Very read at your cool. own risk. But it does have some cool animals and like spliced animals. Uh, just just pick it up. Check it out. Lots of dark weirdness. Yes. And we have the new EC Archives volume out this week. This is Weird Fantasy Volume 3. Um, as usual in hardcover with uh, retooled colors. Um, the writers in this particular volume include Bill Gaines, Al Feldstein, Frank Frazetta, um, Wally Wood, Jack Kamen. We have a whole cast of famous comics artist. Um, this is one of the greatest sci-fi comics ever published, now collected in this volume. Uh, this particular volume collects issues number 13 through 18 of the comics anthology remastered. Um, so again, we have uh, art by Frazetta, Wally Wood. If you're a fan of the old EC archives, um, I actually, uh, Weird Fantasy is one of my favorites. I like I love Tales from the of Crypt, these. of course, but Weird Fantasy is definitely up there for me as well. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was just going to say some of these like old EC, like this archival anthologies are one of my favorite things that we put together. And the presentation yeah. is so nice in these hardcovers. So, very, very nice. um, yeah, highly recommend. Yeah. I, have a, I have a giant Tales from the Crypt poster behind my desk. Right. But it's his, you can't have it. It is mine, you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been waiting 14 years for Incredibles 2, and it is finally <laughs> among us. Uh, on sale today, we've got Disney Pixar, The Incredibles 2, Heroes at Home. Uh, this is a great young reader's title. Um, Dark Horse partnered recently with Disney, so we're going to have a ton of Disney-related titles that are going to be coming out in the, in the months and years to come, uh, launching off with Incredibles 2. So... This is going to uh, follow the kids while their mom and dad, Mr. Incredible and Alaska, Elastigirl, are both taking on new and very different jobs. Dash and Violet are doing their best to help out. Uh, first, Dash and Violet become sudden and secret heroes when they interrupt criminal activity on a routine grocery trip to pick up some essentials. Then, helping out at home, their efforts to keep up on the chores are unknowingly obstructed by the innocent mischief of their little brother, Jack-Jack. What could possibly go wrong with a tiny baby with a myriad of very powerful uh, superpowers? Secret powers. So, yes, this is especially created for younger readers, but it is enjoyable for all, uh, myself included. Love this book. Yeah, it ties right into the movie that has just come out as well, which, yes. again, we've been waiting for so long. It's very exciting. Like, my whole adult life. Yeah, basically. Basically. So. so. Is that uh, everything? We got, do, yeah, that's our whole spread. Do, we do the whole it's thing? It's a very... Uh, it always feels like so spread. much. Yeah. Yes. So this is a nice haul for anybody who shares this video today. You can win one of every comic that we talked about. 
Um, just remember to make your share public. We'll check back tomorrow and let you know if you have been randomly drawn as the winner. And I think that's all we got for you. That is all we got. So thank you so much for watching and make sure to tune in again next week. We do a new episode every Wednesday for the new comic book day rundown where we are telling you all about what is new on comic shelves. So we will see you then. See you next week. <laughs>